Minister Lawrence Wong shared that our Jubilee year should also be a year of reflection about who we are as a society and what we want to be. Ma Sam Tan just earlier spoke about an inclusive Singapore that celebrates our multicultural, multiracial diversity. In the next 10 minutes, I'll be sharing about our desire for Singapore to be a giving nation, where every Singaporean participates in a culture of giving, and giving becomes a part of us, part of our lives, part of our DNA. And like what Mr. Sia Kenping has mentioned earlier, giving is not just about making donation. It is also about giving our time, our efforts, and also our skills and our competency. Giving enriches our lives with purpose and perspective. As the Chinese saying go, shi bi shou geng yu fu. Generally, it means it is more blessed to give than to receive. For giving to become part of Singapore's DNA, we should start with our young, like what various members have mentioned earlier. So I thank Ms. Penny Lo for her thoughtful comments on youth volunteerism. Youth Call Singapore, which we launched last year, is a major new platform to amplify and support the desire and energies of our youth to contribute to building a better Singapore together. Please allow me to update the House on what has been happening with regards to Youth Call Singapore. Over the past year, the 200 aspiring Youth Call members received mentorship and training, and they have launched various projects in a wide range of areas, such as education, special needs, and environmental sustainability. Each and every aspiring Youth Corps member has a unique story to tell. I have met them in actions and they have never failed to inspire me with their passion, with their boundless energy, and also creative ideas. Hui Yi is one such volunteer whom I had the pleasure of meeting on two separate occasions. Hui Yi, she is a full-time special education teacher at Eden School. Her passion for helping those with learning difficulties motivated her to volunteer with Youth Corps Singapore. As a teacher of students with ASD, Hui is in a job that is, both, that is both rewarding and challenging. Yet, Hui has also chosen to devote her free time to help out at an adult day activity centre for the intellectually challenged. Hui and her fellow aspiring Youth Corps members noticed that the clients at the centre and the centre staff communicated through very vague hand gestures. So her team set out to improve their communications by using symbols on a specially designed board. And over a couple of months, this mechanism helped everyone, the clients as well as the centre staff, better understand each other and communicate better, such that the client has enough courage to venture out of the centre and interact with the community. Youth Call Singapore is about bringing together passionate individuals like Hui to benefit the community. Even though each aspiring Youth Corps members have many commitments to juggle, be it work, be it study, family, and even marriage, what unites and motivates each and every one of them is their desire to be part of the change they wish to see in our nation. At MCCY and uh, NYC, we are very heartened by their passion and the way they are impacting our society, our Singapore. Indeed, with this new platform to do good, the Youth Corps Singapore is sowing seeds of service during the most formative years of life. These seeds could germinate into a lifelong journey of service and giving that sets us apart as a giving nation. Mr. Alex Yam earlier asked how we intend to enhance youth space to better support our youth's aspirations. Through a consultation exercise that uh, stretched from October to December 2014 that involved more than 1,000 youth, the youth indicated most interest in music and dance. To better support youth interest in this area, we shall be revamping SCAPE in the coming year. The physical space at SCAPE will be refreshed. There will be more space and better equipment for our young Singaporeans to hone and display their talent. For example, we envisage an alfresco bandstand where young musicians can regularly perform in front of their peers. Programs at the SCAPE will be organised by our youth, for the youth. SCAPE will further spotlight our youth talents by hosting events like the inaugural National Youth Film Awards, the YouTube Fan Fest, and the 10th edition of the Shine Festival. SCAPE will connect young musicians like the Sand Willows and the Gentle Bones to the wider youth audience through school performances with the SCAPE Invasion Tour. 
So to inspire our youth to help the less fortunate in their backyard, SCAPE will expand its community-specific programs and community trails at different neighbourhoods. Next, our young working adults are also getting into the spirit of giving. I'll give an example. Take the 50 for 50 Ground Up Initiative is one good example. In fact, I was just at their closing ceremony in early February where I witnessed for myself the positive energy that the 50 young working adults generated alongside with their corporate donors, the VWOs, as well as the beneficiaries. This initiative brought together 50 young adults to partner with companies like the UOB, the Bayan Tree, to fundraise for 50 worthy community and social causes. And one of the 50 for 50 participants is this gentleman, Mr. Jesher Loy, who is a board member of SCAPE and also the Director of Branding and Market Development at Yakun International. Not only did he rally many business owners to contribute to his cause, he also got his company, Yakun, to pitch in by donating 50 cents to charity for every Christmas frosty drink that's sold during the Christmas season. Companies like Yakun see themselves as part of a giving nation. They recognize the role businesses can play in building up the community with their contributions. Corporate giving strengthens our society. And companies in Singapore have indeed been responding to the evolving community needs. For the past 10 years, gross donations by companies to institutions of public character have doubled between 2004 and 2013. To step up corporate giving, we hope to see many more companies not only donating, but also rallying and also enabling their staff to contribute their time, their skills, their talent, their con their competencies. Like what Mr. Xia Kimping has mentioned, companies have an enormous influence in nurturing the culture of giving in our working adults. Mr. Xia spoke passionately about urging the top leadership of companies to drive giving efforts. And we agree with him. This is indeed what our partner, the National Volunteer and Philanthropy Centre, or NVPC, aims to do. NVPC is engaging C-suite executives so as to broker partnership amongst like-minded corporate leaders and match the companies to charitable causes. It is also developing a Singapore roadmap for corporate giving, which will guide companies in their journey of giving back. And as well as recognizing some of the best practices. Now, I shared with, uh, I talked to the MVPC colleagues and they shared with me that what they aspire to do is for each and every companies in Singapore over time to make, and I quote, goodness, the business of every organization. That's the aspiration. An example of one such company is Changi Airport Group, or CAG, that is trying to make goodness part of its business. CAG has partnered North Light School through SportCast, a sport SG program that links those in need with volunteers and donors through sports programs and life skills workshop. CAG fully funded North Light School's participation in a football program called Saturday Night Lights. Saturday night lights. Huh? In addition, its employees volunteer as trainers and mentors in the program. Every Saturday night is a time where the CAG staff and the North Night students look forward to. Sportcast has touched the lives of more than 5,000 students and youth over the past three years through such corporate partnerships. And one such youth whose life was touched and changed is 13 years old Zul. Last year, Zhu thought that his dream of becoming a competitive runner was really over when his school changed his focus from running to football. <clears throat> and he took out his frustrations on his parents and back then fell in with bad company. His father, an ambulance driver, was really at his wit's end. Then he read about sport cares, care runners. He put Zhu under the sport care program and soon, Zhu, as you can see on the screen, he was training with care runners after the gui under the guidance of national coach Ilan Govan. Ilan Govan immediately recognized Zul's running potential and began developing Zul in sprints and middle distances. In less than three months, Zul won his first ever race in 800 meters event of the Akira Swift Championship with a time of two minutes and 19 seconds. Zul caught the attention of the Singapore Sports School and in January this year, he earned a coveted place there and you're all and we're all very happy for him. Now, the story doesn't end there. Zul is now an, a volunteer at the 28 SEA Games. 
Just last Saturday, Zul and his sister helped out at our 90-day countdown to the SEA Games. So, as you can see, it's really wonderful how Zul is giving back to society because he has experienced firsthand how sports care has made a difference in his life over a course of one year. Now, besides MVPC and Sport Cares, the Community Development Council, or in short, CDCs, are also actively promoting a culture of giving back. Earlier, Mr. Patrick Tay had asked about the role of the CDCs. In 2014, the CDCs worked with more than 500 companies that gave back to their communities. For example, the Southwest CDC has joined hands with many civic-minded companies in partnerships with the VWO in the district to help the less fortunate. One example is Amos International, a logistic firm in Southwest. They volunteered in food deliveries and outings for less privileged children. Since 2010, it has reached out to more than 600 people. Now, switching the attention back to individual, one is never too old to volunteer. And I can give you a very interesting example. Let me share very briefly the story of Mr. and Mrs. Pang, our pioneer generation. Mr. and Mrs. Pang have been married for 50 years. Yeah? Yes, they got married in 1965. They ran a provision shop together and now their partnership at the work has evolved into a partnership of volunteerism at Old Joy Care Services, an elder care service centre. Mr. and Mrs. Pang head to this centre four days a week for three hours each time and help out in exercise and drama activities for the elderly. They also manage the logistics of these activities with the managerial skills that they have gained from running their provision shop. And at NCCY, we, we hope there will be more volunteers like Mr. and Mrs. Pang as we create volunteer opportunities that are attuned to our seniors' motivations, our seniors' strengths, and also our seniors' interests. Our seniors, they have a lifetime of skills. In Mandarin, we say, they have a lifetime of skills and experience to contribute to our society. Our seniors, they can also benefit from volunteering. In fact, studies have shown a positive association between volunteering and both mental and physical well-being. To find out how to better encourage and support our seniors in their interest to volunteer, we have sought the feedback and views of over 100 senior volunteers. The key motivating factors we realised for volunteering were related to number one, desire to learn new skills, number two, their desire to set a positive example for the younger generation, and number three, to escape from boredom at home. Some of the challenges that they faced were getting a good match between the skills that they have and the volunteer host organisations that's needed. Family and personal commitments as well as health and the ease of accessibility to the locations where their help was needed were also factors that also influenced their volunteering decisions. We can well understand that. So the feedback helped MCCY and Southwest CDC to pilot the design of a pipeline of initiatives to engage our seniors volunteers in Southwest District. And this includes matching our volunteers with the needs of the local community and a training grant for senior volunteers. Now on this note, let me wrap up with a very interesting story of 87-year-old volunteer, Mr. Wee Cha Lee. Mr. Wee is a father of three and a grandfather of six. Mr. Wee was a cash register technician for 40 years before retiring in 1987. As a youth during the Second World War, he was an air observer volunteer. His job back then was to patrol the streets at night during the Second World War and to look out for bombers. Whenever he saw any bombers, his job was to run and warn everyone else to shut off the lights to avoid detection. Very important job. And more than 70 years later, Mr. Wee is still volunteering. Kudos to him. Two or three times a week, Mr. Wee lends a listening ear to seniors at the Presbyterian Community Services. So, as you can see, giving back is really part of Mr. Wee's DNA. And uh, we asked him, and he said, he said that, and I quote, I find it satisfying to be able to help others in need and to see other people happy. If I don't do this work, I would be bored, unquote. Like what Minister Lawrence Wong and also Mo Sam Tam has mentioned, this year, as we celebrate SG50, many Singaporeans have expressed the hope that giving will increasingly be part of our national identity. Giving will become our way of life. So if we continue to nurture a culture of giving from the young to the old, and every stage of our life, with every opportunity, 
we can certainly make giving part of Singapore's DNA. On this note, we hope everyone in the House will join us all in realising this vision of Singapore as a giving nation. Thank you.